Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jack and in this video we're going to compare the, one of the cheapest Zen 3 CPUs against one of the more expensive Zen 3 CPUs and that's the 5600G against the 5900X. And as you can see here the 5600G goes for around $130 and the 5900X goes for about $350 US. And we're going to take a look and see at how they compare when gaming on a 6700 XT. So I'm going to leave my system specs in the description down below and I'll also leave timestamps for the video. If you do find this video helpful or informative, please uh, think about subscribing, like the video, and or leave a comment down below. And let's move on and take a look at the comparison of these two CPUs. Starting off, 5600G. Uh, it's not showing it on here, I believe, but it's a, the code name for it is Cezanne. It is based on AMD's mobile uh, CPU APU ar architecture, whereas the 5900X is Vermeer and it's a desktop class CPU with no integrated graphics. And we're comparing a 6 core 12 thread against a 12 core 24 thread. And as you can see, max boost is up to 4.4, base clock is 3.9 gigahertz on the 4900X. The max boost is 4.8, but with this one that I have, it regularly goes up to 4.95, and the base clock is 3.7. And we have the one thing that makes a big difference I find on these CPUs is that there's a huge difference in the L3 crash. Even if you were to compare 5600G to a 5600, the 5600G only has 16 megabytes of L3 cache. The 5600 has 32. And where we're running a 5900X, we have 64 megabytes. Uh, besides that, the uh, other interesting thing to note is, again, 5600G is uh, integrated graphics as an APU. And it's running on PCIe 3.0 versus the 5900X is PCIe 4.0. However, that's not going to make much of a difference. Uh, the 6700 XT does not max out the 16 lanes PCIe 3 on a 5600G. So that will not be an issue. Okay, we're gonna take a first look at Cinebench R23 and just compare the CPU synthetic benchmark for a single core, it goes from 1400 points to up to 1600 points, which is a 14% increase. And on multi core, we're going from 11,100 up to about 22,500, which is more than double the, the score. Uh, why you're not seeing an even bigger difference on the multi, uh, multi core score is because the the CPU maxes out uh, on all cores, I think at 4,400 megahertz for the 5900X. So it's not getting that boost up to 4.8 or 4.95 on a single core. So it is bringing down the single core score or the per core score down so that you're running the 12 CPUs at 4.4 gigahertz. And I'm not exactly sure what it does for the uh, 5600G, but that's essentially why you're seeing a low score, because really, if you're just kind of do the math, you'd have a single core um, score that's 14% higher, but you also have double the cores. So you'd expect to be double plus an additional 14% on top of that, but you're not getting there just because it can't run all those cores at the max, uh, the max uh, speed. Now, starting off, we're gonna take a look at some older games, and this is where you're gonna notice the biggest difference. So looking at Assassin's Creed Origin, we have the 5600G, and this was an oddity, I re-ran it, and it kept getting the same score, but for 1080p and 1440p, it was essentially the same thing. And if you look at 1080p and 1440p on the 5900X, you're getting significantly higher FPS versus the 1440p. But then as normal, when you go down to about 4K, everything levels out because you're more CPU dependent, or sorry, you're more GPU dependent than you are CPU dependent. So you're gonna get roughly the same, same result there. Far Cry 5, this is another older game. And 1080p versus 5600G on the 5900X, uh, you're definitely getting a much better score 
on 1080p. That's because in these games, they're not as graphically intensive as some of the newer games. So the CPA, CPU has to do a lot more work to try and keep up. So you're definitely going to notice where the 5900X has a better output than the 5600G. And you're going to see that as you come down to the 1440p. And again, when you get to 4K, it's pretty much uh, even because you're no longer CPU bound, you're GPU bound. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, again, it's another older title, not as graphically dependent. So you're going to get better results on the 5900X and at 1080p, you're getting 20 FPS, that works out to like 15% uh, better score, but oddly enough, the the lows are roughly the same. And then when you, however, when you move to the 1440p, things almost are identical. There's this way I'd throw it in as margin of error, uh, where it's only two FPS, there's practically no difference. And then again, moving to 4K, again, practically no difference. So keep in mind this card is primarily made for 1440p gaming so that's where the biggest comparison is and as you get to 1440p the um the difference pretty much becomes immaterial uh or insignificant it's really not worth like say if you're running a 5600g and we're thinking about upgrading to 5900x not worth really upgrading because you're only getting an extra 5%, maybe 10% max, which isn't that much in the grand scheme of things. Your money would probably be better off uh, saving up for you know, a new system or even getting a better graphics card and going up to 4K. And on breakpoint, uh, again, 1080p, there's quite a big gap from the 5900X down to the 5600G on the average, it's 134 versus 117, but oddly enough, when you look at the lows, we're hitting 60. And then, which there's no difference between the two CP, or, yeah, CPUs. And on 1440p at 14, yeah, 1440p between the 5600G and the 5900X, not much of a difference there, neither is there any difference on the 4K. Now we're getting into the newer titles. These titles are the ones that are a lot more GPU dependent. They don't rely as much on, well, they do rely on the CPU, it's just that they're more graphically intensive. So the GPU has to work harder. And in this case, pretty much across the board from 1080p to 1440p to 4K, there's not much difference. We're talking three, uh, two FPS, and then that's within the margin of error. That's Every time you run this game, you're going to get a slightly different, or run the benchmark, you're going to get a slightly different number here. That's within the margin of error right there. So, again, if this, if you're looking to play newer games, there's absolutely no reason that you need to go up from 5600G to 5900X. I'm going to put an asterisk beside that because these games that I've been playing, this is through or not playing, it's the benchmarks. Um, it's apple to apples. It gets rid of a lot of external variables. When you start getting into like some of the larger open world games, which I haven't tested here, like uh, Fortnite or even Modern Warfare 2, those games are definitely, you'll notice a big difference with, by having a CPU with a higher core count, just because there's a lot more players on the map and you can have spikes, uh, frame time spikes while you're playing, which can cause an issue if there's too many people on the, on the map. And you'll notice that having more cores or even a better CPU with the, the higher uh, core frequency will help smooth out your gameplay. But if you're looking to play um, games that are open world single player, you're not really going to have as much of an issue with those frame time spikes or anything like that because you're CPU dependent because there's not going to be as many variables going on. Again, as well, if you are looking to stream or anything like that or have anything running in the background, having a higher core count CPU will help because you can have those pro have those processes running in the background using additional cores that will not be used for gaming. 
So moving on to the last game that we're looking at, again, it's another newer game, and you're going to see the same theme, Cyberpunk 2077, pretty much across the board, everything is the same because this game is more GPU intensive than some of the older games, so there's less reliance on the CPU to keep up with it, it's more the GPU that's being the bottleneck with the game. Anyway, um, that was my rant. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the description down below. I'd appreciate it if you uh, would like the video and or subscribe to my channel. Thanks and have a good one.